Talking about the music itself and the way it's been constructed, how did you go about selecting the music? Were you part of that process? Yeah, so I was very fortunate. I was um, working with a group of people, including Patrick Nolan and Jane Sheldon, who's a fabulous, fabulous singer herself. Yeah, we were looking at the whole history of the representation of women in opera. And I sort of started by thinking about some of the common tropes of women in opera. So often you have, you know, mad woman is, is a common one, the woman who goes crazy or is pushed, pushed over the edge, the femme fatale, the ingenue, uh, you know, the witch or the sorceress. There are all of these kinds mm. of common figures of women. And so I started thinking about that and thinking about, uh, you know, women who either conform to those stereotypes or step outside them in some way and interrogating them and and actually when you dig deep on those sort of stereotypes inevitably you find a more nuanced and interesting character than the stereotype might suggest yes. and I was also thinking about um, that the I suppose a woman's lifespan and thinking about representing not only young women you know women who uh, you know are grappling with perhaps, you know, moments of first love or um, being seduced and having to deal with the consequences or becoming pregnant, but also questions of motherhood, old age. Mm. I think that was really important yeah. to me that the show was looking at women at, of all stages of their lives. Also, you know, the levels of power that a woman has access to. So in the show, there are empresses, there's a queen, but there are also women in really desperate circumstances, you know, yes. women who don't have means. A really, really moving aria in the piece. It's from an opera by Mary Finstra called Biographica. Mm -hmm. And it's about, in a way, the, the great Renaissance mathematician Cardano. But there's a moment where his mother sings an aria when she's pregnant with him. She's had uh, three children who have already died of the plague in, in Italy. She has no means whatsoever. She's pregnant with a fourth and she's absolutely desperate and it's the most desperate circumstance. Mm -hmm. And so th the show also interrogates women who have power um, but still may feel compromised in some ways or unable to exert it as well as women who can but also women who don't have power, women who live in poverty, women who have desperate circumstances. I think that was really important to capture that breadth as well. So in terms of how we selected the repertoire it was then a sort of balancing act to try and find you know a range of pieces that would capture all of those questions, I suppose, of class, of means, um, of time of life, of the type of woman, of the trope that we're maybe interrogating or asking questions about. Um, and then we were also thinking about how the pieces spoke to one another. And I think that was really important too. It's not just about a conversation in terms of the narrative, it's also about a musical conversation and, and making sure that there's a range of different styles of opera captured um, and, and pieces that lead into one another beautifully. It's been a really fascinating but quite complex kind of process to, to bring all that together and to settle on the pieces in a way because there could have been, you know, 50 different productions yeah. of The Sopranos, um, each that would have had a different kind of inflection and, and in the end you've got to go on your gut on the pieces that you feel uh, most you know piercing and moving and um, and powerful and and also another thing that we wanted to to do was I suppose balance out the, the pieces that people might be familiar with mm. and introduce people to some new pieces to me the piece that has surprised me the most in encountering it and that I've fallen in love with is this choral piece um, from the dialogues of the Carmelites and it's about these 15 Carmelite nuns and it's during the French Revolution and they're about to be executed because mm. they won't renounce their faith and it's the final piece in that opera and this, these 15 women are singing with this, with this extraordinary orchestra as they're marching to the guillotine and wow the composer has written in the sound of the guillotine and, and during the piece, as that sound sort of sounds, um, a woman's voice disappears. But it's the most moving piece of music and even if you didn't know that context, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible piece. Powerful. That's another group of women that based on real women, so yeah. that happened in history.